Oh my goodness. We are live. And I am just waiting. There we go. We are live. Hello. I'm going to just check on a couple things as we get started today for our live channeling for the winter solstice. And so if you'll just give me a moment, I'm going to let some people gather because I know that there are many people who are planning on being here. It's very exciting, actually, to have so many people expressing just joy to be here to celebrate the solstice. Although I will say, yes, okay, so we are live. So I will say that this will be a very different celebration of the solstice, I believe, than you've ever experienced before. And here's why. If you are new to my world, I am Dr. Robin McKay, and I am the, um, I channel, I am, I, yes, I will say it this way. I channel Marisol, who is a high frequency benevolent being, and she comes from the sun, but not our sun. She comes from Soleil, the central sun, and she has quite a bit to say today about solstice and the sun and what we think is the sun and all kinds of things. And so I am going to, if you can hear in my voice already, Marisol is here. So I'm going to just let her take over and we will just enjoy this time together. If you are here with me live, I'd love to see comments coming in in the chat um, so that I can say hello back to you. And it's joyful to be able to be here with you. So Let's go ahead and dive in to this Becoming the Channel live channeling. And I would like to welcome everybody here today to this live channeling. It's my great joy to be here with you. And Robin um, had wanted to do a solstice something, a solstice celebration. She he does almost every year. In fact, has every year since probably 2006 or so. And she was remembering one night, yes, 2006, she was remembering how she had broken up with her boyfriend when she was in graduate school and she was at home alone in her little yellow house with the red door in Kansas with her two cats sitting by the fire celebrating the solstice alone. And I was showing her that that was one of the moments that she actually started really picking up on my presence in her life, even though she couldn't have named it at the time. She didn't feel alone. She just felt at peace. And so every year since then, she celebrated the solstice and talks it, about it being the longest night. And that, that is how we know it to be is the longest night, the shortest day, the sort of division between um, winter and springtime. Today, I was remembering that Persephone, the Greek goddess, was taken into the underworld for six months out of the year. And her story, the abduction of Persephone, is a way of describing the seasons of the year on this planet. And that eating the pomegranate seeds, which I happened to buy a pomegranate today, eating the pomegranate seeds was Persephone's, um, we'll say, agreement, although she didn't, she wasn't aware of this, but when she, before she left the underworld, Hades, invited her to eat pomegranate seeds. And that then made it so that she would always be in the underworld for about six months of the year. And so on this day, this is a very strange day, isn't it? Because on this planet that you're living on, we experience great extremes, great polarities, light and dark, cold and hot. I live here in the desert Southwest, which is very beautiful to hear today. I'm wearing a, a a sweater today, but I don't need to. It's probably still 70 degrees outside. And it is important for us to recognize on this day that the solstice is a, we'll say it's a distortion. And I said that this is going to be unlike any, any other solstice ceremony that you will have encountered. So you'll just have, you'll just bear with me and you're invited to be curious about this for yourself because I'm going to show you a different way of celebrating this day. And that is what we will be doing today. So as we begin, what we need to understand is that this is a distortion. 
of how the the earth is meant to be receiving light, receiving dark, and so on. And right now we are living in polarities. We are living in extremes where there are extreme heat and extreme cold, extreme light, extreme dark, dark, and so on. Polarities. This world is made up of polarities. And yet, and even the, the word solstice, soul, is the masculine for sun. And what I am here to remind you of, which you will know in your heart, is sun, soleil, is feminine. And today is a day that you are invited to reclaim the feminine aspect of the sun, the, the feminine sun, the true sun. And I talk about this in my spiritual intelligence codes that I channeled in October, and we will put the link in the comments so that you are able to download those if you have not already, and we will do that right now so that you have access to those because I go into great detail about the central sun and I go into great detail about Soleil. And this is important because the sun in our, we'll call it solar system for now, but the sun that is closest to us is in some ways a, I'll call it a way station, a transport really, just a point of transfer of information from the central sun into, into our planet. And just before I started recording today, I was standing out on my in my backyard. I live in a mountainous area, and so the sun goes down a little bit quicker here than it would in the rest of the valley of the sun where I live. But as I was standing there, I was realizing that there were transmissions coming through the sun as we know it from the central sun. And you might find that too as you start to explore Soleil as the true sun you may find that you receive transmissions in the form of light, of course, in the form of colors. These colors tonight were beautiful magentas and pinks that were coming through the sun at that time. And I just felt such a heartwarming and heart opening experience, a, a sense of gratitude and recognition for these transmissions coming through. So today on what we're calling the solstice, the solstice means literally the sun stands still. And what I would say about that is that is a, we'll call it a myth that has been a story that has been told for generations. And like all good stories, there is enough truth in it to make it seem like it's true. And so we would just invite you today to consider that there is another storyline or another way of understanding. We won't call it a story, just another way of understanding that the feminine aspect of the sun, the soleil, is really meant to be here all the time. It's not meant to be great light and great dark. It is meant to be this, this ascension journey that we're on and the creation of the new earth that we are moving toward is meant to be temperate, is meant to be filled with light, with precious light. And I do think it's funny that on this planet right now, one of the things that happens with the sun is as much as we celebrate the return of the light today, there is also a fear of the sun. We have to wear sunscreen, we have to wear sunglasses, we have to limit our exposure to the sun and all of those kinds of fearful beliefs about the sun. So there's something strange going on, I think, that we can probably, we can probably just start to dissolve and start to resolve that in each of us in reclaiming the feminine aspect of the sun. We're also reclaiming the feminine aspect in all of us as well. Because as light leaders and light workers, it is our, I would say, our sacred mission to shine our lights and to shine our lights despite the worry or fear that anyone is going to be have their their feathers ruffled or their boats rocked because we are simply shining and so it's interesting in this aspect of the channel of of being the sun that while there are people who have a lot of fear about the sun it's only my job to just shine it's only my job to just be in the essence of who I am, just as it's your job to be in the essence of who you are. 
And when you can do that, regardless of other people's impressions of you, regardless of what other people think of you, if people think that you're crazy, if people think that you are have lost your mind or something like that, it's okay. You can still shine. And that is the big message today for this day of the solstice is to please turn up the intensity on your own light. Turn up the intensity on your own light and shine as brightly as possible because it is within each of us that we, we increase the light on the planet. And so that the extremes, the light and the extreme light and the extreme dark become less extreme, become more in harmony, in balance, in the direction of, we'll call it perfection. And won't that be wonderful when we finally receive into our hearts and minds and bodies the perfection of the light? Won't that be wonderful? And so I want to take just a moment here and say hello to the people who have joined us on the call. Oh, yes, I'm seeing all kinds of wonderful faces, names here. Valerie is here and Anita, it's good to be here. Thank you. And it's good to have you here. Judy's here, Sarah. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you. And happy solstice to you. Yes, and looking forward, Mary says, looking forward to changing my perception of the solstice. And yes, this is true because when we, and this is for anything, when we buy into the stories that have been, we've been told for generations about why things are the way they are, if you go back to any, even any of the Greek mythology, we can, we can read into our understanding of even today's, even today's understanding of why things are the way they are, as much as science would account for different things, um, we still heavily rely on story, don't we? And so my invitation to illuminate to you today, as we are celebrating this day, this return to our own light, this return to our own light, is to, I won't say question everything, but be really very discerning about the stories that you've been told and all of the stories, even the stories that perhaps science tells us or perhaps the history books tell us or wherever you're getting your information. The news channels tell us just be very discerning about that because as you become more discerning about the truth, the truth is more illuminated for you so that you are able to tell. What is actually true here? What is actually going on? And this is not meant to throw anybody into an existential crisis or anything like that. It's not necessary actually to do so. It's only an invitation to stand in your own light and allow the truth to be illuminated for you. So with that, that is my opening salvo, I'll call it. I'm going to have a sip of tea and I think that you'll enjoy my, my, my teacup today. It says... I'm merry and extremely bright. Isn't that wonderful? This is one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things. So now I want to talk with you about what you can do with the sun, with Soleil, every single day to create ceremony. And when I say create ceremony, I don't mean worshiping the sun. This is not sun worship. We do not worship the sun. But we do appreciate the nutrients, the energy, the information, the codes that come through the sun. This is the attention to the sun is not placed on worshiping it. The attention to the sun is placed on receiving the wisdom from the sun. And I hope that that makes sense to you because there are some people who would criticize people who worship the sun. And that is not what we are doing. We are just simply being in awe of our sister, Soleil, the sun and saying thank you for the transmissions and thank you for the light and thank you for the nutrients that you're providing my body, mind, and spirit. And so I want to talk with you about a couple of things that I've been doing that really support my connection with the sun. And, and when I say sun, I mean Soleil. My connection with Soleil and with the... Mm, just the connection with light generally. Because what we all need... Now more than ever is more light, more light in our bodies, more light in our minds, more light in our brains. And the best way to do that is to get yourself out into Soleil, out into the sun. 
So there are a couple of things that I, that I would recommend that you do. Now you will think this first one is funny because I live here in the desert Southwest and it's still very beautiful out today. In fact, I went walking barefoot in my neighborhood and this is a really wonderful thing that you can do if it's, um, if your weather accommodates you at this point, if it doesn't, then you'll have to wait until springtime when it's more feasible for you to do this. But to walk barefoot is actually a way of grounding yourself energetically, electrically into your system grids. And what I mean by that is that there is actually a flow of electrons that comes through the ground, that moves through your body, through your feet and up into your body. And so when you're walking barefoot on concrete or on grass, <clears throat> on other natural um, surfaces, you're going to automatically be more grounded. And when you're more grounded, you can actually receive more light in your system. So that's the first thing that you can do. Now, if you're unable to walk barefoot outside, don't worry. There are other things that you can do in order to bring yourself more light so the other thing, oh, I need to take a sip. Hold on a second. And while I'm here doing that, let me just see if there are any, I would love to hear from you guys. What's coming up for you so far about what you've learned about the sun, about Soleil, and what questions do you have? One of the things that Marisol that I love to do is answer questions. It makes it easier for me to direct my attention when I have questions. So if there is somebody who has a question, I would love to hear about it. Oh, Melanie says, yes, growing up in Alaska, it was so celebrated and yet this perspective is interesting. Yes, Alaska was all sun, is all sun or all dark, isn't it? And there are other regions of the world that are like that as well, for sure. And I'll ask you just briefly. Okay. So the other thing that I can do, and, and I do talk about this also in the spiritual intelligence codes, but one of the things that I learned from one of my dear mentors, Malia, is to open um, my forehead and my temples and the top of my head to the sun every day and just to receive the sunlight on the temples and on the forehead and on the top of the head. This is also revitalizing to your system. And again, this is not meant to worship anything. It was just meant to receive, just receive, just allow the rays of sun to come in through the top of your head, through your forehead and through either temple. Now, the other thing that I would say is that I've stopped wearing sunglasses entirely. And that's very unusual, especially where I live. Everybody wears sunglasses. But what I have found is that my eyes have become accustomed to just being in the sun. And now my eyes actually appreciate for the most part being in the sun. There are sometimes when it gets a little bit intense. And so I might put down the, the sun visor in my car or something like that in order to give my eyes a little bit of a break from the sun. But there are certain times of the day when my eyes are much more, I would say, not just accommodating to the sun, but really just appreciating the sun full on in my eyes. And those, those times are usually sunrise and sunset. And I do believe that that is in part because of the, and probably a large part because of the transmissions that are actually coming through from Soleil. And isn't that wonderful that we can receive the transmissions from, from Soleil in the mornings when we rise and at night as the sun is setting. One of the things that I've practiced for years and years I learned this at professor camp long ago when I was in graduate school. And at professor camp, we learned as we would watch the sunset over Lake Michigan, that you had to watch the sun go all the way down just in case you could see the green flash, the green flash of light that was to appear when the sun set. And while I never saw the green flash of light, I always got in the habit of just watching the sun until it fully set and I couldn't see it anymore. So anytime I'm at the, the beach, I'll do this. And even on the desert, I will do this as well. You just watch the sun and you don't look away until the sun goes all the way down beneath the horizon and then you cannot see it anymore. And that is such a wonderful practice. It's a wonderful practice of just being in the present moment, 
of watching this beautiful orb sink beneath the the um the horizon and it just brings over a calm beautiful presence on my life and on my spirit as i do that so those are a couple of ceremonies that you will be able to implement if you will into your own lives if you choose to in order to bring in more light to your body now most of the healers and helpers who i work with operate at frequencies around mm, we're going to say 15,000 to 20,000 bioenergy units and that is just how much light the body is holding at the at the moment once the sun codes and once the spiritual intelligence codes come on board your the amount of light that you can hold in the physical body begins to expand and so where i'm finding that people are that the light workers especially the healers and helpers are most mm, coming into their potency i'll say coming into their potency is about double that is about 30,000 bioenergy units so one of the ways that you can add more light into your system is by exposing yourself to the soleil to the light and by expose i don't mean that in a negative way at all it just means stand in the sun and receive the light and that was one of the things that i did actually earlier today besides when i was watching the sunset i was sitting out in the sun and just absorbing the light i've always been a sun baby and maybe you have too especially if this is one of your favorite times of year oh and lana says she's seen the green flash that's amazing you must have a better eye than i do for that that's funny oh and judy reminds me that the natural evolution of a planet is to become a sun well that is a very interesting perspective i hadn't thought of that before what i'm very curious about Judy, now that you bring this up, is something, I believe I talk about this in the spiritual intelligence codes, that Vega, that is the sun in the constellation Lyra, which I believe is a part of a bigger constellation, but we can talk about that later. But Lyra has the, has the star Vega, which is the sun. And Vega will say... I think it was like 16,000 years ago, according to astrono astronomers, Vega was actually the North Star on this planet. And today, Polaris is the North Star. And then again, in another 12 to 15,000 years, it's, it's projected that Vega will become the North Star again on this planet. So what the encouragement here to you today on this day, on this day, is to begin tuning into this true North Star, which is Soleil, which I think is Vega, and to really begin honoring the feminine, the feminine light, the feminine aspects of the sun, and to illuminate the stories that you've been told and have taken as truth or fact to begin stripping those stories away so that you can really truly stand in the truth and become as clear of an intuitive channel, as clear of a leader as you possibly can, unobstructed by the distortions and disruptions that are existing on this planet at this time. So with that, I'm going to open up and see what oh here we go oh sarah says i stopped wearing sunglasses too i wondered why i've noticed an inability to see as well in the dark though is it related hmm i don't know about that you'll have to tune in and ask yourself that question um and let me just see oh well here is something interesting that I just recently discovered when I was, um, I had just finished a, a three day, uh, facilitating a three day retreat with one of my highest calling clients here in Scottsdale. And one of the things that I realized as I was um, restoring her sacred vision through her optic nerve, I realized that we hold a tremendous amount of trauma in our retinas in our optic nerves 
So what I mean by that is if you've ever had an experience where you've seen something and it stuck with you, you witnessed an accident, you witnessed something terrible, even a a TV show or a movie that has violence in it can create trauma. And that trauma somehow gets stored in the, the retinas, in the optic nerve more broadly. And what ends up happening is that optic nerve keeps playing that story, that movie over and over and over again. So every time you close your eyes, you see the movie playing, makes it difficult to sleep, makes it difficult to focus, to concentrate and so on. And so by restoring the sacred vision, by restoring the optic nerve to its optimal functioning, we're actually, I'm going to say neutralizing trauma that exists there. And Sarah, I bring this forward for you because I'm not sure exactly not to being able to see as well in the dark, but I am reminded there was an old uh, medicine man I used to work with long ago around the same time as I was actually in the, um, in Lake Michigan at the Lake Michigan watching for the green flash, um, who would say at nighttime, if you can't see well at night, move your eyes back and forth and up and down several times. And it activates the rods and cones in your eyes so that you can see better at night without light. So this is something, perhaps there is just a simple activation that you can do just by moving your eyes back and forth and up and down, rolling them around a few times so that the rods and cones are activated properly so that you can see at night. I would be curious for you to try that. I think that would be wonderful. So you'll have to let us know how that goes. Let me see, what are some other comments or questions? I'd love to get some engagement And I'm appreciating all of this engagement, of course, as well. So let me see, what else does, are we going to be focusing on today? So the messages from the central sun are available to us, but it does require that we are paying attention to Soleil. It does require our attention. It does require our devotion to the practices that would attune us to the frequency of the central sun. This is something that I talk about on the podcast with Miriam. I think that was episode 30, where we talk a little bit more about the central sun and so on that might be of interest to you. But when we, when we do this work around the sun, around Soleil, there is by, just by nature, I suppose, um, a pull or a draw to discover more about the central sun, sun and so on. And so that would be an interesting thing for you to do even today, as you were saying, good night as the, as it becomes dark one more night and the stars come out and we love the stars, by the way, of course, and the moon as well. But as, as you're ending your day today, what I would say is perhaps you would set your intention to tune in to the central sun without distortions, without without disharmony, and just allow the central sun to advise and inform you as well. This could also be a really wonderful way to bring more light into your world. So there are two other things I want to talk about today. One is that I found it interesting. I went to Catholic Mass last week. I do still go to Mass, and I'm appreciating it a lot. But I was curious about it this time because um, what the priest was talking about during his homily was, of course, a return of the light. And there are many, obviously, Christian um, meanings for returning of the light as well. But one of the things he said is, please remember to focus on the light. And all the things that he talked about were like the Christmas tree lights and the street lights. And I was so I was so amused by this because I I thought he forgot the biggest light of all, which is our soleil. Isn't, isn't that funny how men will do that sometimes, I suppose. So that's just something to think about how, how um, 
people will talk around the talk around the topic but won't get right to the heart of it which is focus on soleil please focus on soleil to receive the codes to receive the transmissions to receive the nutrients from the sun and the second thing i will talk about as we are getting ready to say good night is to talk about another myth that was brought to my attention last night i believe it is finnish and in the Finnish myth, myth, there was a Finnish god who kidnapped both the sun and the moon. And I thought that that was very interesting because I think that there is maybe some truth to that, isn't there? So today, as we are, as we are standing here on the precipice of more light, we are actually bringing in more light just by virtue of us focusing here all together today. And... What I will say is that today is the day that we free Soleil. Today is the day that we begin bringing back Soleil into our awareness, onto the planet. And the process has already started, of course. There are others who are working in this direction as well. But collectively, in our community, this is the day that we begin. Those of us who are here gathered today for this time that we have together, those of us who are watching the recording or listening to it, yes, this is the day that we begin the process of bringing back Soleil, freeing Soleil. And isn't that wonderful? And I think in the process too, we also free the moon, don't we? Just by virtue of the Finnish, the Finnish myth. So with that, I'm going to invite you to put your hands on your heart. You can close your eyes if you would like to. And we can breathe in and breathe out, breathe in love and grace and breathe out everything that does not serve. And on this day, on this moment, you are invited to make a sacred promise to yourself to bring in more light, literally bring in more light to your bodies more light to your nervous system, your brain, more light to every cell of your body. You can make a sacred promise to create a ceremony or a ritual to honor, to receive, to be, to be in the light every single day. And this one Seemingly small gesture, practice that you create for yourself has um, an exponential, has an exponential effect on the light in this world. So with that, I'm going to close for tonight. I wish you all a very beautiful I want to call it solastis. I know that's not a word. I want to call it solastis. But that's not even right because soleil does not stand still, not ever. She's always moving. So we will find another word. Maybe there's somebody in our community who knows a better word that we could call this day. But this is the day that we restore soleil. And thank you for participating in this beautiful ceremony today. I love you and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.